Hi, my name is Josh Udy. I'm the Elementary Mathematics Curriculum Manager for the Houston Independent School District. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to develop a conceptual understanding of what an angle is and how we measure angles using wedges and protractors. Specifically, I'm going to walk through how you're going to want to move your students from a conceptual understanding of what a wedge is and how angles can be measured using wedges all the way through to understanding how the numbers on the outside of a protractor can be used to measure angles and degrees. To start, I'm going to talk about how you can build a protractor in the classroom with your students. You're going to need some supplies. First, you'll need strips of waxed paper, nothing fancy. Then you're going to need to cut circles using the wax paper. I actually just used the lid or something round, traced it, and cut it out. This is an activity that your students can do, so all you really have to do is provide the wax paper. Once you have your materials, you're going to want to start your lesson by making certain that your students understand there's really two ways to understand angle. One is just using the concept of a rotation. Think about the minute hand or the second hand on a on a clock and how one of those hands moves away from the other hand. So we can measure angle as the spread between those two hands on the clock or really the distance or span between those two rays. So an angle is when you have two rays that come together and then we measure the angle looking at the span in between it. The other way of understanding angle is through the concept of a wedge. Think about a piece of pizza and cutting out one of those pieces. Each piece of the pizza is a wedge. We can cut the wedges of the pizza into different sizes, and each of those wedges could be used to measure a certain angle. So, for example, if I had four pieces of pizza and each one was a certain wedge size, I could measure what fraction of the entire circle is comprised of those pieces. So, to reiterate, students need to understand that an angle is a rotation, sort of like the hands on a clock, or even in sports, somebody doing a 360 on a skateboard. That's also an example of a rotation. They also need to understand angle as a wedge, kind of like a piece of pizza. Once your students understand what an angle is, you're going to want to introduce to them the idea of measuring an angle. Angles can only be measured using other angles, okay? Sort of like a distance. We can only measure distance using smaller units of distance. So when I measure the length of this table, in inches, I'm really just choosing a smaller unit that I've standardized and I'm measuring the distance, counting up however many iterations of that unit I have. For angles, it's very similar. I have a certain angle and I want to count and see how many smaller wedges fill up that angle. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the waxed paper that you have. First, you'll want your circle Fold it in half to make a semicircle. And have your students do this while you do it in front of them as a demonstration. You may even want to talk about the fact that that's a wedge. It's a very big wedge. Fold it in half again. Here we see a wedge that's a fourth of the circle. Fold it in half yet again. Now our wedge is an eighth of the circle. And we're going to fold it in half one more time so that we have wedges that are each a sixteenth of the circle. And because we're just creating this by hand, students' wedges might be a little bit off, but everybody's wedges should be about the same, regardless of the size of the circle that you drew. So have the students unfold it, and then they're going to now use this waxed paper protractor to measure angles. And I'm going to walk through how that's done. Because it's hard to see the lines on the waxed paper, I'm going to take a marker and kind of outline where the different wedges are. However, in the classroom, that's really not necessary. Students can just use the waxed paper protractor and count the wedges without drawing any lines on it. For the purpose of my demonstration today, I've created a protractor and 
drawn lines on it so that we can use this to measure angles. So what your students will want to do first is get any type of polygon. I have an isosceles trapezoid here today, and I'm going to take my full circle protractor, and I'm going to line up the center of the circle and one of the lines of the, one of the wedges along the bottom of the trapezoid. And here I'm going to count how many wedges do I have here in this angle. So if I'm looking at the angle here, the bottom left vertex of the isosceles trapezoid, I can count there's one, two, almost three wedges. So I would say that this angle has a measurement of about three wedges. It's a little less than two wedges. It doesn't matter which two wedges I use, it's just going to be, every time, a, a, almost three wedges, a little bit less than three wedges. Okay, so when your students are practicing with this, you really just want to reinforce lining up the center of the full circle protractor on one of the vertices, lining up one of the uh, wedge creases along a side, and then counting wedges. One, two, three, four, five, and a little bit more than five wedges. So I've measured two angles. We had this one was almost three wedges, and this one was a little bit more than five wedges. Allow your students time to explore with the full circle protractor. Emphasize to them that there are 16 wedges and that when they're measuring the angles, they're simply counting how many wedges fill a certain span or spread between two rays. After your students have had time exploring with the full circle protractor, you're going to want to have them cut it in half. Have the students simply cut the circle in half along the fold of their, one of their folds, and have them save that second half for when they make a mistake. They'll have a little one to come and recover their mistake. I might have to do the same thing here with you today. So now that they've cut it in half, have them remeasure the same angles using a half circle protractor. Allow them to practice aligning what used to be the center of my circle on the bottom vertex of their shape. Make sure that one of their wedge lines goes along the side of their figure and count one, two, almost three wedges, and then have them measure again the other angle. They'll notice that they have to turn the protractor, the wax paper protractor, slightly. They line up the center there on the vertex, one of the wedges, and they're counting how many wedges are in between. One, two, three, four, five. About five wedges. The measurement should be the same. Allow students time to practice doing that. After students are comfortable counting wedges and measuring angles, comparing their work with their friends to make sure that everybody is coming up with the same number of wedges for a given measure of an angle, explain to them that somebody came up with the idea of numbering the wedges on the protractor. And I'm going to show you how that looks right now. Have the students take a pen or a marker or a pencil, something that will show up, and label the wedges first going clockwise. Have them write a zero here, because at this point there's no wedge, and then a one here, because I can see one wedge, the span of one wedge when I go from here to here. Help students see that. Go ahead and mark around the remainder of your waxed paper protractor until you get to eight. Next, have students measure again, but this time have them look at the numbers. See if these numbers help. Have the students line up their waxed paper protractor again and see if the numbers help them count the wedges. They should notice that I'm seeing the number five and eight, but that's not helping me know that there's really just three wedges there. So there we have a problem. If I line my wax paper protractor up like this, where it didn't start at the zero, 
I really can't use it. So this is where we need a second set of numbers. Explain to your students that now they're going to take and mark counterclockwise, going the other direction, on the inside. Zero, one, two, three, four will be the same. Five, six, seven, eight. This is going to help your students understand how to read a real protractor, the top numbers going clockwise and the inside numbers going counterclockwise. Have them realign their waxed paper protractor on the bottom vertex of their shape. And now they can see how the numbers on the inside help them count the number of wedges. Because the waxed paper protractor is lined up here and I see zero here, I know I need to use the inside numbers to count. Zero, one, two, three. This angle has a measure of about three wedges. Have them practice going the other way. They may choose to turn the shape completely, line up the vertex here, and again, zero, one, two, three, four, five. That obtuse angle has a measure of about five wedges. Help students also see that when they measure an angle like we have here on the left, they can use the inside um, numbers to, to count that there's three wedges there, or they can slide it over to this other angle, and now they see that they're actually going to use the outside numbers to see that this angle is about three wedges. Allow your students lots of time to practice with their waxed paper protractor. You want to make sure that they can read angles using the outside number scale as well as the inside number scale. Have them compare their work with their group or with their partner and verify that students are lining up that protractor using that center of what was their circle. To conclude, I want to go over a few quick points, things that you really need to take back to the classroom. First is making sure that your students understand that an angle can be seen as a rotation, like the hands on a clock, as well as a wedge, like a piece of pizza. A protractor uses the concept of wedges and counting wedges as a way to measure other angles. Students need to learn and understand why there are two numeric scales on the protractor and how to line up the center of the protractor and the zero depending on which way they're measuring the angle. Allow them to measure acute angles, obtuse angles, angles that have rays going out from the left and from the right. They need a lot of practice with this until they're comfortable and they can use the numeric scale. All of this understanding is going to transfer to when students learn about what a degree is and that a degree is really just 1 360th of a circle. In fact, a degree is just a very small wedge. So once you've built this understanding, students will be ready to transfer that conceptual knowledge into using a real 180 degree protractor. I hope that this video helps as you continue to work with your students on measuring and drawing angles and understanding what a protractor is.